going to have you turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll begin reading at verse number 1. If you need a Bible, let the ushers know they'll bring you one. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll begin reading Verse number one. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. <clears throat> Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And the sin which so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. And let us run Amen. with patience. The race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Who for the joy that was set before him. See, sometimes when you're in a trial, you have to project yourself and look at the outcome to give you inspiration to keep on going. Amen. When Jesus was going through, he looked at the outcome, salvation for all mankind. My Lord. So let me go a little further in the Garden of Gethsemane My God. that I don't give up. Amen. Amen. When you're going through a trial, sometimes you got to look at the outcome saying, Lord, give me the inspiration I need to continue this journey so I don't give up. My the God. scripture said these light afflictions. Amen. It says in comparison to what we're going to get, these, they talking about me, these light afflictions. My Lord. I don't feel that good this morning. These light afflictions. You realize what you got waiting on you? My Lord, my children cutting up. These, that hurts, but these light afflictions, amen. My family stopped talking to me. These light afflictions, my, my God, God. My boss is messing with me. These light afflictions, amen. No matter what we go through in life, in comparison to what we have waiting on us on the other side, it's just a light affliction. My God. So here even Jesus, when he went through, he looked forward. Come on and read, Brother Frank. And let us run with patience. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before who him. for the joy that was set before him. And endured the cross. And we got to endure our cross. I don't know what your cross is. Your cross is different than the cross next to you. But let's endure our crosses. Amen. Let's not, let's, let, let us not lay down. Our crosses, amen. Amen. Let's endure our crosses. Thank the Lord. Come on and read. Despising the shame. See, Babylon says that you can put your cross down and you can keep on going and you're going to be okay. No cross, no crown. My God. Thank God. Amen. He said, but Lee, God don't understand that some of us got some heavy crosses. Yeah, he understands. That's why he got something called grace. My God. Thank the Lord. He give you grace sufficient to bear the cross. Amen. You got a big cross. I mean, a big cross, he give you big grace. Amen. Amen. A medium-sized cross, he give you medium grace. Amen. Thank God you got five children. Amen. He give you five children grace. Amen. Thank the Lord. You got an unreasonable spouse. He give you unreasonable grace. Amen. Amen. There is no excuse for us to lay our cross down. Amen. We want to keep our cross so we'll get our crown. Come on and read, brother. Despising the shame. He despised the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank God he set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him uh -huh. that endures such contradiction of sinners. Come on. Against himself. He was talked about, dogged out, lied upon, read. Lest ye be weary and Lest faint ye be in your weary minds. and faint in your mind. One time an old preacher said, a saint was saying, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. They talking about me. They said this. I don't understand this. He said, listen, you know better than Jesus. Right. No, I'm a good saint. I don't do nothing wrong. And I mind my own business. I just pray and fast. I come to say, I don't do nothing. How can they talk about, how can they not like me? How can they, I'm, I'm just like the perfect saint. I don't do it. <laughs> You're no better than Jesus. Right. I don't care how you walk, how you talk. Somebody going to talk about you. Somebody going to misunderstand you. Somebody going to have your name for lunch. 
They might have been up here in the choir this morning. But anyway, somebody might have, uh, somebody go, somebody, it, it is what it is. Jesus has somebody in this choir. Matter of fact, one of his preachers, amen, did him wrong. So don't you go crying when you think, this say, I ain't come back to church, just say, listen, my God, consider Jesus. Consider Jesus, my God, next time you want to stay home. Next time you want to say this, they ain't this, they, they ain't give me no takeout plate. They're, consider Jesus. You're having a fit because you can't have a takeout plate for real. We pay tithes and we pay. Consider Jesus. Amen. Come on now. I'll go back up to verse number one. <laughs> Wherefore? Wherefore? Seeing we also are compassed about uh -huh. with so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside. When I preach this morning, it's time to lay the weights aside. It's time to lay the weights aside. Amen. The Hebrew writer, many believe it was the Apostle Paul. Some feel that it was an affiliate of his, but not him, not from his pen itself. But the Hebrew writer just had went over an illustrious list of the accomplishments, the great accomplishments of the people of God in their time. Actually, the Bible, the book of Hebrews, the book of Matthew, the book of Psalms, they were not written as we see it today. The words translated as near as possible, but the arrangement was different than we see it today. They wrote a letter and it was like a long, lengthy letter to the Philippian church or to the Roman church or whoever, or Timothy. It was actually like a letter. And if you wrote a letter, you wouldn't break it up. You would just write the letter. Well, for convenience sake or understanding sake, after the Bible was written, man came in and for a good purpose set it, uh, broke it up to chapters and verses. But in their humanity, sometimes it cannot fully, you may not fully get the spirit of what's being written if you don't go back and read before, especially if they're alluding to something. So he began saying, wherefore, seen. He's talking about what he just talked about. Yes. And what he had just talked about was 11th chapter yes. in which a bunch of great things, a laundry list of great things had taken place in the church. The people of God. From a historical context, all the way back from the garden, and he walked you through biblical history. All the way through Noah, Cain, their children, Cain, uh, Adam and Eve, their children. Then he talked about Noah. Then he talked about Abraham, Moses. He talked about Joshua. He kept on going, taking you all the way down. Then when Joshua, actually uh, Moses left, Joshua was there. After Joshua, it talked about taking him through uh, across the Jordan River. So they came right into Jericho. It talks about Rahab when she came. All these things, it just takes you on a laundry list of greatness in church history. Well, he said, wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience that the race that is set before us. So here, he says, the church the people of God accomplished some great things. And we must understand that God's greatness should not be a thing of the past. Just as all of those saints accomplished great things in their day, we are to also so run and accomplish the things that God would have for us to accomplish in our day. The best days of the church should not be in the past. But God is not a respective person. They accomplish what they accomplish because of their relationship with God, their consecration, and their faith. 
So here he was not a compromising preacher or a Sunday feel good preacher, but he was a realistic biblical preacher. He said God is able to do the same thing, but y'all are going to have to lay aside some weights. If you want God to do what he did in yesteryear, thank the Lord, thank God, then some weights would have to be laid aside. We feel deep within our hearts that God has greatness for us today. We feel that in the end time, according to biblical uh, history, prophetic interpretation, God has greatness for his people today. The church is not going out with the limp. The people of God are not going out with the limp. Thank God they're going out with glory. Amen. But here he said that we have to be careful that we don't allow things to weigh us down in our experience, my God, for us to accomplish what God has for us to accomplish. Friend, if you're here this morning, God has a design for your life. God has some blessings for your life. You're to be a blessing to other people. What sin causes you to do is to be real selfish. How in the world can you knowingly sleep with this person, have a baby, knowing you're not married, you're going to bring her to this world without a father in the home with him. You know how that would make that child being raised. You're just being selfish because you want to feel good. You're being selfish because you like that boy. You think he's real cute. But if sin is just a selfish, selfish thing, why would you sell dope knowing that most people People, matter of fact, a majority, like 99% of folk that sell dope, you end up eventually getting caught. You end up e e e eventually addicted or you're going to end up, my God, eventually, eventually dead. My God, so here you're going to go to prison. You're going to end up a dope head or you're going to end up dead. Why would you get involved in selling dope knowing that your mother and grandmother is going to have to go to court and sit there in a court case? Why? Because sin is selfish. Sin will cause you to break in a house and you know, my God, when you get caught, my God, your parents going to have to uh, mortgage their house to put up my God for your for your uh, your trial to go now here they are 60 70 years old when their house should be paid for and they have to refinance it so now they got to start all over again now they started off my God your court case amen with just a few gray heads but when you get done with them selfish grandchild when you get done with them selfish child you had that baby now yeah, your mother got to raise the baby see sin causes you to be real selfish my God God got a design for your life God got a blessing for your life. God, you don't have to go out like this. All God is saying is you got to lay aside some weights though. There's some things weighing you down, my God, from God having this way with your life. So there's some weights that need to be set aside so you can fly to the level that God would have for you to fly. My God, my God. We're going to look through these laundry list. We're just going to pick a few of them to look aside some weights that we have to lay aside so that we can really fly at the altitude that God would have for the church to be at in this end time that God would have for you and I. Back in August 25th of August in the year of our Lord 2001 there was a singer and this singer had sold millions of copies of, uh, uh, of CDs and albums. And she had really taken off. She had signed multiple contracts and she just, on the radio, they were playing all her CDs. This, they had this thing on television called MTV. They would play all of her songs on MTV. They had a thing back then called BET. They would play all of her songs on BET. She was on the radio. She was just all over the place. They would just, oh, they would play her song, play her song, play her song. And, well, she went to do a music video in the Bahamas. And they end up finishing the music video. It was supposed to end on the 26th and then fly back to Florida. But it ended on the 25th. And they were so tired from being over there for so long. They said, listen, let's go back today. 
And they said, the plane that y'all came in will be here tomorrow. They said, this is a plane on the runway. Let's just use that. It's not the same size. It's a little bit smaller. They said, it don't matter. Let's just pack our stuff on that plane and let's go. So they began to get all of her security detail, all of the uh, record industry executives, all the individuals began to pile on the plane. Well, they had picked up some stuff in the Bahamas. They had picked up some gifts some this, that, and the other, no doubt. And they began to pile all this stuff on this plane that was already a little bit smaller than the plane that they were supposed to wait to the next day to get. Well, Aaliyah and all of her team, her entourage, packed on this plane. This young lady name was Aaliyah. She was a singer. And they packed on the plane, and the plane was real heavy. It was 700 pounds heavier than it should have been. Oh but everything they had, they wanted to keep. They was like, we need, we, I'm not putting this out. I'm, let's just take off. Let's just, we just make it work. The pilot said, all right. So he began to go down the runway and he took off. But just a few moments later, Whoa. 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 Bam. Everybody, one lived just a few hours, but everybody on board ended up dying. Why? Because it exceeded. It had some weights on there that they needed to let go of so they could fly. But they didn't want to let these weights go. See, the same thing spiritually. Some individuals, my God, they, 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 they want to take off. They want to do some things. But, but there's some weights on them. There's some things there. There's some things that they need to identify. What they needed to do was identify what was excess of baggage. What didn't they need? My life is better than this extra skirt. My life is better than this. And they should have identified it, discarded it, and she probably would have turned 40, I think, earlier this year. But they didn't want to release any weights, my God. And they end up crashing. Well, God is saying the same thing. Hebrews writer is saying the same thing. Lay aside weights so you don't end up crashing. Many times individuals get saved, amen, and they never really take off. Why? Because there's some weights, my God, that they don't want to lay aside. Sometimes it's some friendships. If that friendship is not, my God, to the glory of God, then you got to lay that weight down. Amen. You want to be saved, but you still want to be with your crew. You know they smoking weed all day. You know that boy don't mean you no good. See, some of y'all, my God, you can fly for God, but you got some weights. That old no good boy, he's a weight to you. You need to lay them down my God so you can take off my God that old habit that you got there's some weights in your life there's some weights in your life that's hindering you from flying to that next level so here see some people they end up never taking off and you say why isn't that person going in there there's some weights this, I don't know what it is. It's some weight somewhere. It's meant, it's meant for you to fly. Salvation is meant for you to get in. Get grounded, my God. Get yourself situated. You get some engines, my God. Take off. But if you see them just around the church, what's going on with it? I don't understand this. There's some weights. Why aren't you at another level? You got too much going on in your life. There's some things that you need to, there's some weights you got to, see, you're trying to fly, but keep those weights. If you're not careful, you're going to end up crashing. You can't do it, my God. You can't try to, to, to uh, I'm going to fly, but I'm also going, no, 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 no. You got to spend time. Lord, where are some weights at? If there's some things that are weighing me down, my God, I'm letting that stuff go so I can fly on for Jesus. We're going to take our time this morning because we feel with everything within us that God wants to take his people to another level.
Amen. We feel, my God, this my nation, God, we feel this city, my God, need to be shaken one more time. My Lord, I believe that God has greatness for this community one more time. My God. I believe God has greatness for this church one more time, my God. I believe God has greatness for you and I, but we must be careful and we must say, Lord, is there any weights that I got? Is there anything that's hindering me from going to the level that I need to go? And let me just say this, friend, I don't care what you're dealing with, you cannot let unbelief hold you back you got to believe God the bottom line is if you study that entire level you can't look at the situation you can't look at the prospects that you're dealing with you those are all unbelief is a weight it'll set you aside it'll cause you to crash you will leave here with no testimony you would never take off you would die worrying why because you don't believe God Michael you couldn't give that thing to God and just let it go so here you got anxiety amen when you wake up when you go to work when you come to church you're dealing with all this stress 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 why because you fully are not believing God to the extent that you need to do. You can't be a perfect example. Why? Because we need to follow you as you follow Christ. But Christ believed God and we got to believe Christ. Go over to Hebrews 11 verse number 1. Let me show you how important this fundamental thought is. We cannot let unbelief hold us back. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful. Now faith is the substance of things. You got to have faith. Sit down to verse number 3. Through faith. Through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed. Skip down to verse number four. By faith. By faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Than Abel came. offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse five. By faith. By faith. And it was translated. Come on. That he should not see death. Come on. Verse six. But without faith. But without faith. It is impossible to please him. We can't please God if we don't have our faith intact. Verse number seven. By faith, by faith, Noah, Noah, being warned of God, being warned of, he wouldn't seen. have built the ark if it wasn't for his faith. Amen. Verse number eight, read. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. When he was called to go into the place where he Abraham was effort, called to go to, he would have never stepped out. Some of us need to step out on some stuff. God is trying to take us to another level. We got to step out on some things. If Mo Abraham wouldn't have faith, he would have stayed right there and wouldn't have become the father of many nations. If he wouldn't have faith, my God, he would have considered the deadness of Sarah's womb. You can't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. You say, Brother Lee, what is the deadness of Sarah's womb? The deadness of Sarah's womb is whatever you see with your natural your eyes my God when God gives you a promise when his word gives you a promise you can't consider the facts you got to consider the promise my God my God, so my faith, God amen, amen. Abraham amen. was able to press past oh, the facts and stand on the promise my God, God amen, gave him amen. a word God said you're going to be the father of many nations my God my, my wife is older it don't matter once you give me the promise God I'm not considering the facts anymore my God, it's my discrediting God. to me it's my God wrong for me to consider the facts when you gave me a promise. Why? Because you're greater than the promise. I mean, you're greater than the facts, my God. my God. Amen. You speak and it happens, Lord. I'm not going to doubt anything. All I'm going to do is get before you and get a word from the Lord. My Once God. I get a word from the Lord, then I'm stepping out on faith. Amen. Somebody here this morning, my God, need to step out on faith. Step you need out, to my get God. a word from my the Lord. Lord, my God. Make sure it's God's word. Make sure he's giving you a promise in your life. And then just step out and you will not sink. My God. Amen. 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 Come on and read, brother. Go. My Lord, by yes. faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. Come on. As in a strange country. He's not going to tell you, are uh, you waiting for God to connect every dot, every eye? God show you, if you do this, then I'm going to do this. Time. That's not the way it worked. It wouldn't take faith if he showed you every single step. Come on and read, my God. <coughs> so God's not going to show you everything. He's going to give you the promise, and he's going to give you the inspiration. And when you step, the step will appear. My God. My God. Amen. He's not going to show you the staircase. All right. When you step, it's there. the step will appear. My God. It wouldn't be faith if he showed you the whole staircase. Many people have never, amen, gone to the next level. Why? Because that weight of unbelief held them back. They end up never accomplishing. Why? They should be way higher than they are. But unbelief. Just step. Just step. 
David, when he was old, he said, listen, I've lived a long time. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've been a shepherd. I've been a king. I've been a whole bunch of stuff. I traveled all over. I slayed some giants in my day. I've dealt with a whole bunch of things. I've seen a whole bunch. But he said, one thing, I'm, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen a person step out on faith and the stair step not be there when they landed. My God. Never seen the righteous forsaken, my God. So Amen. we have to lay aside any weight of unbelief that would hinder us from becoming what God would have for us to be. My Lord. Keep, keep reading, brother. For he looked for a city which found... Go down to verse number 11. Number, number 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. Verse number 17. By faith Abraham... Come on. When he was tried, offered up Isaac. Go to verse number 20. By faith, Isaac. Come on. Bless Jacob and Esau. Come on. Verse 21. By faith, Jacob. Every generation, they had to have the faith. My Lord. If they tried to duplicate the work of the prior generation without the faith of the prior generation, then they was going to come to naught. My God. And see, they had to make sure that there was no weights in their life, no weights in their experience, because it would end up hindering their faith. My Lord. Look at verse number 23. Read. By faith, Moses, yes, when he was born, uh -huh. was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. Come on and read. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Yes. By faith, Moses, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. See, somebody here this morning need to step out on faith and give their heart to God. Yes. My God. It said by faith, Moses, when he was come of years. All right. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I'm not going to let... The prospects, Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh of Egypt. My God. Daughter. I don't care what the devil tell me I'm inherit. I don't tell, care what promises he offered me. In order for you to give your heart to God and to really fulfill the life that God has for you, you got to step out on faith, rejecting whatever promise Satan would ever give you. You're going to be this star. You're going to be a rapper. No, you're going to be this. You're going to be that. You know what? By faith, I'm believing that if I step out for the life that God has for me, it's better than the life I'm giving up. My God. By faith, I don't have to keep running around here with these no good men. Amen. You're not going to find a good man in a bad place. You don't go to the garbage can to get your dinner, do you? All right. All right. And how are you going to find a good man at a bad club? My God. You're going to find a good man in the streets. Think about what you say in the streets. Then you ain't no good. Ain't no. No. Quit looking for an earthly man and find you a heavenly man, and his name is Jesus. Amen. My Lord, my Lord. Jesus is the one that satisfies. This morning, you got to say, you know what? God, you got a promise for my life. I got children I'm raising now. And I got to step out on faith. Give my life to God in a real way. I, you know what? Well, Lee, how do I do? You got to lay some weights aside. I don't care if it's some addictions. I'm laying that stuff aside. I don't care if you got a medical marijuana card, my God. You don't need that food. The Lord said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. And you don't got to have the mindset of, I can't stop taking these Vicodin. I can't stop taking these uh, 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 Oxycodone. I can't, I need this every day. No, 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 no. We're not telling you to stop cold turkey. We telling you to stop in faith, believing God can replace whatever you they're doing for you. You got to believe God to do better. God to do better, my God. You let that thing go, but you take on Jesus. You take Him as your Savior. You take Him as your healer. You take Him as your fulfiller. You're not dealing with my God. I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. Listen, the Bible said he'll keep in perfect peace. All right. My God, my God. Whose mind has stayed on me. Amen. Get your mind in the book. Right. Get your mind on Jesus. Go to church, amen. Go to Bible study, amen. Come to Friday night, my God. Go to Sunday school, amen. Thank the Lord. And you'll realize all that anxiety, all that stress that you've been dealing with. Thank God God can take it away. You ain't got to go out like this. God got something better for you. You're going to go out with your teenage years, my God, on beneath. Go out to your 20s, my God, the, uh, on beneath. Go to your 30s, you beneath, my God, the privilege that you could be. God wants to bless you this morning. God got something
something greater for you this morning. All that you've been seeking after is in Jesus. But you got to have faith. You got to believe God. And some of y'all, it didn't, it shouldn't take great faith. Why? Because you really don't got that much to give up. It won't take God that much to outdo what you got. If you just be real, your life ain't all that. All right, all right, all right. If you just be real with you, the Bible said, come, let us reason together to the Lord. We got to negotiate. Well, when you come to the negotiation table of Jesus at the altar of salvation, to be honest with you, you really don't got that much to offer. My Lord, my Lord. A headache, a heartache, no good this, no good this, havoc here, in death there, and all that you get, you get the blood, you get salvation, you get peace, you get joy, you get a cattle on a thousand hill, amen, you get deliverance, you get your sins justified, you get forgiveness, thank God you go on, you can get sanctified, thank God you can get healed in your body, thank God, and when you get older, on the other side, he'll give you a mansion, on the God, other my side, God, my God. thank God. Amen. How can Amen. you not? Your faith should be inspired this my morning, God. my God. I'll take away, I'll take away that heart, that joy that you got towards sin, the pleasures of sin. I'll take that away from my you. God. I'll give you a brand new start this morning. By faith, you can get a brand new start. My God. You don't got to go out like this. Amen. One generation after another. Whole group of friends, my God. All of them going nowhere. Same week doing the same thing. Over and over and over again. Spending all their money getting their nails done. Going to the same place. Getting their hair done. Going to the same place. Trying to impress some folk that don't care about them. My God. God is saying, wake up. My Lord. Wake up. And by faith you can. Come on and read, but for My God. Praise God. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, yes. refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, uh -huh. choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God yes. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So here, Amen. go back to verse number seven. By faith, Noah, uh -huh. being warned of God of things not seen as yet. So here... Each one of these gives us insight on some weights that we may have to deal with to go to that next level that we can be that example as this generation was for the Hebrew writers. It says Noah, by faith, what did he do? Being warned of God yes. of things not yet, not seen as yet. Come on. Moved with fear. Yes. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Uh -huh. By the which he condemned the world. He condemned the world. And became the heir of righteousness. So which it is says, by faith. Pre prepared an ark to the saving of his house. It said, God, if you go back to Genesis, you read the account, he saw Noah. His family was in order. His family was in order. If he looked and God saw, that's why I said he condemned the world. Why? Because there's what? In the ungodly age in which they were living in, all the situations that they were dealing with, he still had his family in order. All right. See, we got to be careful, saints. Some weights that hinder us from going to that next level in God, if we're not careful, is right in our home. If we're not careful, we got to get before God and let God. Listen, let me say this right here. If Brother Noah and Sister Noah wasn't on one accord, they wouldn't have went on the ark. You see, what, we, what we'll do is we'll have these weights in our home, these weights in our marriage, these weights with our children, these weights, our family. I know, and this stuff is weighing us down from being what we need to be for God. We can never take off. Why don't brother so-and-so really take off? Why don't sister so-and-so really take off? Why don't this family, why don't they really go to that? They're smart. They're intelligent. They know this scripture. They know that. What? If they were honest and they got before God and asked the Holy Ghost to help them, the Holy Ghost would, would identify there's some weights there. There's some weights there. I do not 
I have respected person. Yes, I blessed yesterday. Yes, I blessed in the 60s. Yes, I blessed in the 70s. You can name all of them all you want, but you won't have that same level of anointing, that same level of blessing. You're not going to turn this city right side up one more time. You're not going to bless the world one more time. I'm not going to use you. Why? Because there's some weights in your home. My God. All right. You got to get before God. Husband and wife can't pray together for real? Seriously? Y'all not on one accord on that level? Y'all together? And we got people trusting God? Children last week, temperature 104, we can't call you and y'all stop last night to 1140 and midnight almost? I got to say, honey, let's get let's pray. Let's put that call. But if we ain't on one accord, we arguing with each other, fussing at each other? That's a weight, and we need to get before God and say, Lord, deliver me from this weight that is hindering me from being what I need to be because me and my wife God. is not on one accord. We're not together. We can come to church, I hug all up, and then Brother Hampton said, be careful of all that. You see these same couples that come to church, they all hugged all up, had this idea, and y'all, all, oh, I want to be like them. No, you don't. It's a show. It's a show. He said, you ain't got to do all that in public. Just do it at home. Just this lover like that at home. You ain't got to go all this. Got the single saints half fighting the devil because y'all up on each other's neck, all doing service, everything. Else. This is church time, not making out time. Right. <laughs> but if we're not careful, saints, it said Noah. I don't know what him and sister Noah had to do. Maybe had to pray. God gave him an assignment. Maybe she ain't want to do it. I ain't trying to build Noah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We're going to get before God. And I'm going to tell you this, husband. You can't always make your wife see your point of view. Say that sometimes you got to get before God in prayer and say, Lord, you got to remove this weight. Lord, you got to help us. You got to show. You got to, because I'm going to tell you, when you get on your knees to get before God to because your wife, you know what God going to do? He going to point right back to you and let you know you got some weights too, some stuff that you ain't forgave. You got some couples that hold each other for 25 years. Something that happened 25 years ago, they still hold each other and they can't get victory over why? Because that thing's a weight. You can't just cover up weight. You got to remove them and lay them aside. Here that thing happened 30 years ago, my God. You still, you bought it, I know, because you keep bringing it up. How do I know? Because we've never been close as we was before. Why? Because, my God, before we didn't have these type of problems, these type of issues, my God. Every time we take two steps forward, we take one step back. Why? Because there's some weights there that we got to get before God said, Lord, is there anything in my, I'm going to tell you, one of the most difficult things to do in the kingdom is to be married to another person. <laughs> Y'all waiting for more than that? <laughs> That's it. You got two different people, two different personalities, two different mindsets, two different upbringings, two different value, two different communication patterns. What you consider giving space, he considers a cold shoulder. Yeah. What you think of words of comfort, he thinks you're talking too much. You think this is how we communicate. He said, no, you just want to run your mouth. No, you don't want to talk about nothing. You talk to everybody else, won't you come talk to me? Here you got two. You think, I can't wait to get married. I can't wait to get married. I can't wait to get married. You better pray. And pray and pray and pray. Now it's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a good thing. Marriage is a good thing. But I'm just going to tell you. So here, we got to get before God as a people of God, as a congregation. Because saints, I'm going to tell you this. We are no more than we are at home. We can go to Africa. We can preach the chart. We can do go. Let's go to uh, Battle Creek. Let's go. Oh, we are no more. And you are no more. Say what you want to say. Put it together. Sing. Go up. Go down. Teach. Uh, uh, proclaim it. Uh, uh, go. At the end of the day, you are no more than you are at home. Hear your children doing whatever. Seriously? When we come up with that, three different standards. Your children do this. Your children. We're talking about principles. Seriously? When did principles become optional? You got, you got your, 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 your boyfriend standing. Seriously? And you allowing that? For real. One thing I appreciate. My parents. They said, no, y'all not going to be away to me. Yeah, we're going to go to war. Y'all going to know from my heart. Come some, some boy coming in the house with all this long hair, braids. No, no, the Bible says it's a shame. All right. That's right. That's right. He had a standards. No, 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 no. Had to go to war. Deal with it. You're going to know I love you, but I love God more. Yes. You're going to know I, I love you for real. 
got some girl, your little daughter come up here. Well, listen, I'm 15 now, so I like these tight, tight pants on. I'm coming up in your house, your, your house with my tight pants. First of all, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful, and God will, God will put a curse over you. Anybody ever seen be disrespectful? Now, listen, you can grow up and you can do your own thing, but be respectful. One thing I appreciate about my siblings to, tremendously. My father is passed on. My mother's passed on, and everything. Else. Even when they got older, walking bent. Oh, my mother and the boy, sister, and they were still going to the garage, put a skirt on before they came. Mama got it. Mama, you, I'm gonna be right there. But they were still respect enough. Yes, right. Respect enough. Yes. Mama, you raised me better than this. Daddy, you raised me better, and I respect you. I'm not gonna be so rebellious. I'm going to do what I want. I don't care about you. Who you think you are? I've never heard one of them raise their voice at a parent. Never heard one of them argue with my father. Never heard one of them, my God, say some words. You ain't got Be quiet. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, with the family we had, it was 11 of us, 13 of us all together. Let you try to say something. Man. Mama ain't got to say nothing to you. When all 11 of us get, all, get on your head, when we get done with you, you ain't going to Mama don't even, Daddy don't even say nothing. After all he's done for you, standing between the porch and the altar, my God, giving up, going through one belt size after another, fasting and praying, talked about, dogged out, called Jim Joe, all this other stuff for you, and now here he is, he needs you, and you gonna turn on him? Are you sure all 11 of us to come upside your head in the spirit? <laughs> with, with, with prayer. <laughs> Amen. Up, so here, so here he said, if there are weights in our home, seriously, yes. Lord, help me out. And thanks, I know technology, God understands all that. But we still got to hold a standard. Right. Yeah. We still got that family devotion. Lord, is that a weight? Family devotion just been a, I'm kind of shoddy. With, Lord, Lord, help me. Is that a weight in our home? Not just the absence of things that are forbidden, but do we have enough fire there? Is there enough fire? Do we actually have the husband? Do y'all pray together? First thing you want to ask somebody, you the husband and wife getting counsel, do y'all pray together? No, no, no. She do our prayer. The Bible said if two shall agree, so your home is weaker. As soon as y'all don't pray together, your home is weaker than it could be. You can say how you want to say it. Say, no, we have different schedules. Or we don't get that personality. I do my own private time. It's me and God. Have all of that you want, but you chose to get married. And you want your home to be rock solid. Y'all need to spend some time praying together. Amen. Is that a weight, Lord? Is there some things that I'm not, is there some things in my, in between me and my wife that's a weight? I'm willing to let that thing go. Go to Revelation 11. Pray for us. Revelation 11. We want to go to that next level. Revelation. Go to Revelation. 11 verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither come up hither now we don't have time to go into the background but it's basically the word in the spirit for a period of time it didn't have its right place it lay dead in the street they weren't respecting they weren't respecting the word or the spirit it wasn't letting it govern and dictating God it was grieved it lay dead its influence lay dead and that's what happened in compromise the word say this but your preacher say this so the word don't have influence in your church the spirit of God doesn't have influence because man is just influencing man got his hands and everything instead of praying allowing the Holy Ghost to dictate and guide the Spirit of God have no liberty in your place so here <clears throat> They got back up on their place, and it said here, he called them up to heaven. Come on to read, my friend. And they ascended up to heaven. And they ascended up to heaven. In a cloud. In a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. See, it says now, and their enemies beheld them. The reason why you need to lay aside some weights that would hinder you from being what God would have for you to do. Sometimes you could be a business owner. Well, there may be some weights. There may be some practices. Treat people right. Yes. Treat people fairly. Yes. What goes around comes around. Amen. People, so you can say, I got a little weight. I'm more concerned about a profit than taking care of that client. That, 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 that desire has become a weight. I want to go to the next level on my job. But I cannot get there on time. I 
cannot get to work on. It's hindering me. I got to get before God and say, Lord, you may not think it's hindering you, but they notice. They notice. You got to say, Lord, help me to be able to go to the next level. So here it said, the word, it said, he said, come up hither. And it said his enemies beheld them. In other words, they stayed down. Let me give it to you like this. Airplane. Many of you have flown before. And we were flying. And it got kind of choppy. It got kind of like... It go like this right here. And I began to watch those that were working the aisle. Like, actually, you want some water? You want this? And they just kept going. So I said, okay, we're pretty good. They, they, they've been doing this a lot. I mean, they do it every day. So if it was something serious, they would probably go sit down. So they kept going. But it got a little... And then you heard, uh, attendants, if you could return to your seat, there's some choppy weather we tried to press through, but it's prevailing and it's pretty strong coming up ahead. So what we're going to do is, we're at 32,000, we just checked the radars, it's still consistent, but it stops at about 38,000. So we're going to go up about 6,000 feet. All right, all right. My Lord. Up there, My Lord. it's smooth. My God. So we're going to actually go up to another level. Amen. See, the reason why when God identifies some weights, amen, you need to let them aside because you need to go to another level. My Lord. In order to go to that another level, you got to lay some weights aside. Here you are dealing with this, dealing with that. You're going through this in your experience, this and that in your experience. If you're not careful... Amen. That's going to borderline take you out of here unless you go up to another level. My you say, God. hold on, Lord. Hold on. I'm dealing with too many things right now. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with fly above that stuff. Lord, I'm dealing with this at church. I'm doing I'm giving this to God. I'm turning my plate up to another level. I'm not going to have this bombard my mind. I'm not going to have this causing me problems. I'm not I'm going to another level. I need to take this thing to it's too much. If you know when you want to know, do you need to go to another level? See how much turbulence is in your life. See how much my God you're dealing with in your home. See how much you're dealing with when you come to church issue. You go to church issue. You look up in the choir issue. You go to work issue. It's just no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Lord in the name of Jesus. I go to bed. I got this problem on me. I wake up. It's on me. I've been dealing with it for over a month. Over two months my God. You need to check the radar. See my God what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. He let him know. Amen. He lets you know. Go up about three a thousand or four thousand square. Uh, feet, amen. It's smooth up there, my God. So sometimes you got to lay aside some weight so you can go to that next level, so you can get that next level of anointing, so you can get that next level of blessing from God. My God. Amen. Back to 11, verse number 4. Come on and read. <laughs> Hebrews 11, oh. verse number 4. By faith, Abel. By faith, Abel. Offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than uh -huh, Cain. Uh -huh. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. So here, Abel, they both gave a sacrifice. Yes. But Cain's was accepted. Right. See, you got to lay aside some weights to offer an acceptable sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen. God is saying, I appreciate what you've been calling a devotion. But you... They both were religious. They both offered sacrifice. But only one was accepted. Only one got the anointing. Only one got the glory and the power and inspiration. Why? Because theirs was accepted. They lay aside any weight that would hinder me from offering a half-hearted devotion to God, a half-hearted uh, a consecration to God. Listen to me. There's no way that you're going to offer an acceptable sacrifice if your mind is not in your prayer, if your heart is not in your devotion, if you just come in the service just to come. But your heart, God is saying, lay aside some way. You got too, and I'm just going to be real with you. Some folk are just too busy. Too busy. You got too much going on from the time, and I'm going to tell you, Television was a problem. Hollywood can now dictate the moral compass of society. Was a serious problem. Study history. When that thing, what the devil put a blow. Hollywood came in, 
It was the, the, the influences with the parents, the church, and your community. But my God, they all got trumped when Hollywood came in. Then he came with the internet. The internet, you got to govern it. You got to be careful. But my God, you got access to stuff that you used to have to go down uh, 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 to Hollywood video, then go into the back room, and you hope nobody sees you in that back room when you can get this video here that you ain't supposed to be looking at. Okay. Now you can just click www. Well, I ain't going to say nothing because it could be something. But anyway, just whatever. <laughs> and here you are at home with your little computer doing your own thing. But now, and I was studying, I said, why is social media, everything, my, I'm getting more and more like Brett Hampton. Brett Hampton will go, everything had a spirit. Yeah. Everything had a spirit. Yeah. And he got before I, oh, I got to see the spirit of this thing. Right. Why, well, definitely going to allow nothing to come that massive. And I said, what is the spirit? And you know what, saints? I've seen it. I'm thinking it's going to be bad stuff. You see that? Yeah. One of the number one spirits. Well, I was yesterday. I'm on an elevator. I'm on an elevator. It was, oh, you said, Brother Lee, how many stores was in the building? Two. The escalator was broke. So they said, go over to the ele elevator. So we went to the elevator. And two floors in the whole system. I only said, one, two. What floor you want to go to? <laughs> The ride from the first floor to the second floor was so long that he pulled out. They pulled out their phone to check their status. Then when we got off, they put it back. I'm finish my shop. They couldn't ride one floor. Somebody might have posted something. Somebody might. Have. That's worse than crack. Seriously, I seen people at, at street lights. In grocery store, the line is already going all the way up, and they seriously, I've seen them. If they left the device at home, they would risk getting fired. I cannot operate. One church, the brother said, "Listen, we're gonna take a fast from social media." No, I'll give up bread, water. I'll give up whatever. I don't gotta eat no more. Oh no! Well, what? I mean, be before they brush their teeth, they lean off the side of the bed. It's right there, corded by their bed. They're not on the other side of the room, right by their bed. I could go. And I ain't on it, so I don't see what you're doing. I'm just preaching. I ain't preaching at you. <laughs> it's by their sleep in their eye, breath stinking. Their <sighs> <sighs> Only way walking to brush their teeth. <sighs> <laughs> Seriously, at the restaurant, they on a date. They don't even talk no more, but Johnny, they literally while the food is coming, the, 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 they order appetizer between the wait and the appetizer. They oh, a good four or five minutes of checking. My <sighs> God, yeah. So how in the world you gonna? have time to pray for real how in the world you gonna really have time to get on your face before God for real how are you not how are you gonna negotiate that and not grieve the Holy Ghost <sighs> seriously God is a jealous God if we're not careful saints some of the social media stuff has become a weight Amen. And folk need to get before God saying, Lord, help me to manage this better, to do away with it, do some. Lord, give me the wherewithal. Why? Where are the prayer warriors at? My God. Can you imagine Sister Green on so? <laughs> Seriously. Unless you're checking on your grandchildren or something like that. I'm not, I, I try to be a, a, a balanced preacher. I'm not condemning you because it's in there. I'm condemning the time you spend it. Right. I'm condemning how that thing got priority over your Bible reading. Yeah. Yeah. My mother read the whole Bible with 11 children. Each year from January 1, read the whole Bible. My God. To the end of the year. She said, okay, I'm going to read my Old Testament scripture, Malachi. My Old New Testament scripture, Revelation 22. We're done. Diapers. Husband as a minister, community leader, on the road, this, that, and the Time. Saints, it takes time to be holy. Here it said, Abel offered. Lord, help us this morning. If there's any weights in my home, if there's any weights 
and my sacrifice, the level of sacrifice that I'm offering. Over in Jeremiah, they talk about the weight. You know what weight that was? The weight of what I used to be. My God. He said, I remember thee. Yeah. And the kind, I remember how you used to be. Man, 10 years ago, my goodness, your experience. He said, but what happened? Wait. What? Your faith was up here. Uh. Anything can you just pray. You lay hands on yourself, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now you got these pill, and now you got, you relying on this, this, this. Uh. You got this, that for real. And the saints of old, when they got, I'll show you the book if you don't want, I'll show it to you right now. They said, I got saved last week at the camp meeting. I took God as my savior and my healer. That's, right. That's the glory that they had. Yes. He said, is there any weight that is hindering you from having faith on that level? What is hindering it? Are you spending enough time? That's your workout. Your devotion is your workout. Your fast life. That's a weight. Call it a headache. Call it I'm older now. I'm about, call it I'm young. I'm too busy. Whatever you want to call it. And if we're not careful, you're not even those that are still holding it. You're just holding, not eating. But you're not really just before God like that. That's become a weight. Paul, in this burden, he said, I see the church. I see glory. I see greatness. I see what we used to be. And I see all the things we accomplished. He said, we're going to do the same thing again. He said, but do inventory. Anything that's a weight. You know what? Praise God. It's some unforgiveness in me. I'm just being real. This matter I've been going through has gone so deep with me that there's some unforgiveness there. That thing has become a weight. There's a broken relationship that I'm dealing with. I tried to go around it. I tried to deal with this. But that thing has become a weight. Over in Psalms, he says, search me, Lord. Search me. I'm not going to search myself, but I want to be everything I should be. I want to fly as high as you would have for me to fly. Apostle Paul at the end, he said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. My God, what? Lord, the fight that you have for me. I don't want to lay my cross down. I don't want to be 80%, 60%. But Lord, any weights that are there, is it my faith? Is it my consecration? Lord, is it my devotion to you? Lord, is it my joy? Renew it to me. Some people, it's a joylessness. That's a weight. You've allowed the enemy just to take all of your joy. Joy. You are one big bottle of negativity. All you deal with is sorrow. But God is saying the joy. How the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, renew my joy. Renew my fire. My fire, my God. I've allowed lukewarmness. I allowed Laodicea. This atmosphere has become a weight to me. I got to fly above this atmosphere. I don't care what other people are doing. Let them come to church late. Let them have prayer. Let them have testify. Let them do it. But as for me and my, I'm going where God would have for me to go. Period. Call me a throwback. Say I don't belong in this generation. Say what you want to say. Then I'll be a throwback then. But I know that I'm reading the Bible right. You say, Brother Lee, what is that? My God, because I read in the scripture, we ain't supposed to change stuff. God ain't coming back for something less. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Yeah. That Lord, attitude don't God. take all of that. It don't do this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. That's become a weight to you. Right. Amen. That's become a weight, my God. Doing stuff to your hair, doing stuff to your wardrobe, wearing stuff. Oh, I was so accomplished through faith. And Father, he said, dear God, in that 12th chapter, dear God, he said, let us, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight so that we can run the race that is set before us. You have an assignment for the people of God today. Father, there's a work for us to do today. And Lord, we can accomplish what they accomplished yesterday, but Lord, we must lay aside every weight, anything, dear God, that would hinder us from being 100% on fire for God, 100% acceptable with God, 100%, my God, in tune with God. Father, we want to lay it aside, dear God. Father, you see those that are kneeling, those in the prayer room, dear God. You see couples that have come forth, Lord God. Father, bless these couples, dear God. Father, Father, dear God, perfect their marriage, dear God. Father, bless their homes, dear God. Father, bless their children, my God. Father, bless the grandchildren, my God. Lord, bless the congregation here. We don't want no weights, dear God. We don't want no compromise. We don't want no division, Lord God. We don't want anything weighing us down, dear God. Father, from going to the next level as a people of God, you're coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Lord, help us to 
this morning. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, dear God. We don't want to look back to the 60s. We don't want to look back to the 70s and 80s, Lord God. You have a work for us to do today, and we can accomplish what they did, but we cannot have no weights weighing us down, dear God. So, Lord, bless us this morning. Revive us this morning. Stir us this morning, dear God. Break up some fallow ground this morning, dear God. May we see ourselves this morning, dear God. We don't want to hold back. We don't want to be in the way of what the Holy Ghost has for the church. And, Lord, we want to be a part. We humble our hearts. We want to be a part. Bless all those, dear God, that came out to the service today. Anyone not saved, Lord, bless them as well. We love you from the depths of our heart. We commit this word to you, dear God, but we're going to hide it in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.